If we totaled up the entire sale of the Maclo collection from the first and second installment, it reaches $922 million. Let me tell you something. This will never get old learning news like this. I'm not the person to get excited about divorce. I'm not excited about anyone's divorce. But oh my gosh, if this happens to me, I would be devastated. I would be here crying with y'all. I would be on the floor and I wouldn't get up. Okay, <laughs> it will be way too much for me. I know you guys still want me to highlight the top 20 pieces that sold during this sale of the auction, what their estimates were and how much they hammered for. And while you're all watching, just go, just send up a few prayers for this couple or this ex couple, because I know that they've dealt with heartbreak having to sell their art collection. If you're into this type of content, subscribe like and go ahead and while you're at it go ahead and hit that thanks button with the little money sign in between the heart and send me a few too what's going on y'all i'm mariah Lise. welcome if you're new welcome back if you've been kicking it with me for a while on this channel we get to deep dive into the art auction market talk about the art world from my perspective and I get to put you guys on game, educating you all with information that I've learned being in this very protective and private art world over time. And of course, sharing updates with you guys with artists that I've worked with under at least our group. Now I can't tell y'all everything and that's just the rules of the game, but I will always keep you guys up to game on what I know y'all need to know. Now the Maclows were married for 57 years with a ton of their money massing from Harry Maclow being a real estate mogul. But the star of the show to me, in my opinion, was his ex-wife, Linda Macklow, who clearly had an eye for valuable artworks. The collection is made up, of course, mostly white male artists. To be exact, 93% white male artists, white men like Rothko, Twombly, Gikometti, De Kooning, and so many more. Now, the movement they collected most from was post-war, modern, and contemporary, with 73% of those artists being American. Now, if you guys been keeping up with the Maclows, then you know this is the second installment of their collection sale, not the first. The first sale happened in November of 2021, where 35 lots brought in a staggering $676 million. That was the biggest total for a single sale in a Sotheby's auction house out of 227 years of their history. That's crazy. I don't really get into many different markets, but personally i don't know any that are like this let me know in the comments if i'm wrong or if you know any markets that are mind-blowing the world that the art market is now if y'all want me to get to the point to where i could participate for y'all in these auctions go ahead and run that thanks button up run it up run it up i need that okay if you're into what i'm talking about go ahead and subscribe like and comment anyway the May 16th, 2022, second installment of the Maclow Collection sold 30 works for $246.1 million. Now, I want to make sure that I'm doing my math right, all right? So, we want to add up the first installment and the second installment. That's 246.1 plus $676 million. Yeah, that equals $922 million. It definitely does. The total sold from 65 lights in what was, what we used to be able to call the Maclow Collection. Now, here's the $922 million question. What were at least the top 10 pieces sold in the second installment? And at the end of this video, we're going to list out the top five from the entire collection sold. Now, let's keep in mind, as I go over these hammer prices, they don't include the fees, just the sale price. Let's go ahead and start with number 10, Bryce Martin, Elements number four, estimating between $6 million and $8 million and hammering at $6.2 million. I want to let you guys know and remind you guys that we are starting at $6 million. Now, number nine, Alberto Gicometti, still two, had an estimate between $7 million and $10 million, and it hammered at $7.2 million, a little bit in between the estimate. Number eight, we have a William de Cooney, untitled number 13. It had the same estimate between seven and 10 million and it sold for $7 million. Or, I'm sorry, $7,550,000. Number seven, Agnes Martin, who is the only woman in this top 10, early morning happiness had an estimate between 2.5 and 3.5 million and sold for above the estimate at 8.3 million. Number six, Robert Rahman Swift had an estimate between 8 and 12 million and it hammered at 
nine million dollars number five we have Sa Twombly who is one of my favorite artists synopsis of a battle which estimated between 12 million and 18 million and hammered a little above the low estimate at 13 mil number four we have a William de Kooning yet again untitled with an estimate between seven and ten million selling above the estimate at 15.2 million dollars we're going up. Number three, we have Andy Warhol, self-portrait with an estimate between 15 million and 20 million, closed at $16 million. So you know we about to climb. <laughs> Number two, we have Gerard Richter, Seascape estimating between 25 million and 35 million with a hammer price of $26 million. And at number one, and last but not, of course not least, we have Martha Rocco, untitled, with an insane estimate of 35 million to 50 million and hammering within the estimate at 41.5 million dollars. Woo! <laughs> I don't know how that makes you feel. That someone can literally just spend 41 million dollars on something and go on with life. I'm not struggling, 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 struggling in life. Like, I'm good. But according to them, I am. <laughs> I'm struggling according to them. I'm definitely struggling according to them. <laughs> now, before we get into the top five of the entire collection, there are three very brief things I have to tell you. Number one, I want you guys to go follow the artists that I work with on RT. Go follow Tay Butler. Go follow Kobe Dill. Go follow Lamont French. Second, I want to highlight all three of those artists. I've been telling you guys for a very long time from the very beginning of this about Lamont French. The Contemporary Arts Museum of Houston featured him in their latest benefit auction, officially giving him institutional support. Guys, we've been, if you've been kicking it with me for a while, we've been talking about Lamont French. We have been talking about his work. If you have been following the journey between him and I working with one another, and to be able to see his work in a museum and the benefit auction was a milestone moment for us. And for it to be sitting next to a place card that says courtesy of at least our group was also a milestone moment for us. And if you follow me on Instagram, this is something you know already. I do not mess around acting like things are not big deals because they are big deals because we work. We work hard for this. And we work hard towards our goals and we reach them and we continue to reach them. So thank you guys for constantly supporting Lamont and collecting his journey and supporting us and supporting me. I never know who's watching this channel, but what I've learned is that there are quality collectors, quality curators, quality museum professionals, quality enthusiasts watching this channel. It shows that we have been able to use this medium and use many different mediums in this channel um, as forming connections with one another. And so thank you guys for the support. He has a solo exhibition coming in November that I would definitely keep you involved in. Now, number two is Kobe Deal. I would really love you to follow him on RC. He just published his first book, Beautiful Still, on MacBooks. Beautiful Still is one of the most beautiful collections I've ever seen um, from a photographer. And I've seen that Kobe create some beautiful work. This is one of my favorites, Beautiful Still. It's one of those collections that gives me chills every time I look at it. And I would love to spend more time with you all talking about Kobe Deal, but we, do, we don't have time here. We're talking about the auctions. So I'll chime in another time with you guys to talk about Kobe Deal. But make sure, though, you spend some time researching him, follow him on RC, read a little bit about his work. And I'm going to leave the link in the bio so you guys can actually buy the book and spend time with it in your home with Beautiful Still. Let me know if you get it. Slide in my DMs. Hit me in the comments, get in contact with me and just let me know, hey, we got the book. Now, also most recently, he was commissioned by the largest airport in Houston to place four of his works in the busiest terminal within the airport, a project that has definitely been a test for all of us, to say the least, <laughs> but definitely worth it. We're going to definitely we're we're 100 percent going to document that. And I'll share that with you guys as well. 
the last I want to tell you about is Tay Butler, who just received his MFA from the University of Arkansas, will have his first solo exhibition in Houston, Texas, under and with Elise Art Group next month, June 24th, to be exact. I know you guys always like to collect from the artists that we work with here at Elise Art Group, so I'm letting you guys know now. Tay Butler has a solo show coming up. Lamont French has a solo show coming up. Kobe Deal has a solo show coming up. Trey Slaughter has a solo show coming up. Erica Alonzo has a solo show coming up. All with Elise R Group. And we have a group recognition in June. I'm sorry, in July. We have a lot going on this year, guys. And I really, really want you guys to be involved with us. If you want to keep up with us, Follow us on Instagram at Elise Art Group. Follow me on Instagram at Mariah Elise. And make sure you subscribe to our newsletter on our website. If you go to the website, wait a few seconds, it'll pop up and you'll be able to subscribe there. Now let's finally get to the top five, which all came from the first sale. We've already talked about this one, but we're going to remind you guys and go over it one more time. Number five, we have Andy Warhol, nine Maryland's estimating between 40 and 60 million and hammering at $47.3 million. Number four, we have Cy Twombly, untitled, estimating between 40 and 60 million and selling for 58.8 million. We have Jackson Pollock at number three, number 17. That's the name of the painting. Estimating between 25 and 35 million and selling for 61.1 million dollars. We have Alberto Gicometti Lenez with an estimate between 70 and 90 and hammering at 78.3 million dollars. Now, number one, the number one spot, I'm having flashbacks because I told y'all this before. We have a Mark Rothko, number seven, with an estimate between 70 and 90 and selling at 82.4 million dollars. Now, here's a tip for you all. Try your best to watch the auctions. It's just another way to understand what's going on in the auction or the art market, period. Now, if you find yourself needing a little bit more education, period, watch my video explaining the auction market right here. You guys can go ahead and click on it now. It'll also be helpful if you guys just watch the videos where I review different auctions because you'll start to learn the language. You'll start to learn the different artists that pop up here and pop up there. Um, but, but don't forget get guys it's, it's it's way more important to get to know the artists that you like don't just focus on the money i know it's exciting and so that's why we talk about it it's mind-blowing it's like oh my gosh i can't believe that sold for that much so we keep talking about it for that element of surprise and that element of oh my goodness right but don't forget to dig into the artist that you like support the artist that you like on ground level this is not the only world of art the, this is not really the world of art. This is 90 million, 20 million, 30 million dollar pieces. But in reality, you can get $1,500 pieces, $15,000 pieces, $500 pieces, right? So operate in whatever market you can operate in and still take your collecting journey serious guys if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe like and show a little thanks i'm telling you show that thanks that's gonna keep me here y'all show a little thanks live a little tip that's gonna keep me around <laughs> but we do it because we love it on a regular on a regular basis i'm working directly with artists to help create sustainable careers for them and with them and to help protect them from the auction market uh, to protect them from collectors that don't value their work. Um, and and I, I get a little bit obsessive with the art market and the auction market um, so we can understand both sides. And it honestly, I have fun with it and it gets exciting. But at the end of the day, it's serious work to protect artists from to protect artists on the primary market so that they're ready for the secondary market. Like I said, the secondary market isn't always the most horrible thing in the world. But if you control your primary market the right way, you don't have to be scared of the secondary market if you plan on reaching that level. Guys, I love y'all. Thank y'all for rocking with me always. I love kicking it with y'all. Leave comments, hit me up on Instagram. It's been love. It's been real. It's been light. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.